Hello everyone, let's talk about abilities this time. In the previous video, I explained how effects works in RPG Builder. Effects and abilities are tied together, obviously. This is how you create your combat, pretty much. So effect, as we saw in the previous video, they are uh, what triggers the actual action, for example, of dealing damage, turning a unit, slowing them, increasing stat, and so on. But the abilities is um, what defines those rules of who you should hit, uh, when can you use this ability, how often, uh, and many more settings that we will be covering. But let me quickly show you uh, the six abilities I have in my bar right now, which are of course not uh, covering everything you can do in RPG Builder, far from that, but it's uh, you know to give you an idea of what's currently possible. So uh, here we have a fireball, which is you know a pretty straightforward projectile. Uh, that is getting destroyed whenever it hits a unit and it's dealing instant damage on hit. Uh, here we have uh, an AoE pull, so it's dealing damage around us and instead of just dealing damage once, it's dealing damage every um, second or in this case, yeah, it's one second for a specific duration. So we will see a bit later how we could tweak uh, those values and make it a bit different. Then we have this con ability. So this is, you know, straightforward dealing damage in a con in front of us. And then you have uh, this fire spray that is dealing damage to whatever is in front of us um, whenever you know this fire is up. Uh, we also have things such as mobility abilities. So we can already dash in a RPG builder. We could also um, jump up, so kind of some kind of leaps um, and all kind of things like that. And we also have those ground uh, abilities. So as you see here, Instead of like being used immediately, like other abilities, this, ab this ability type is first showing you um, an area on the ground. And when you click it, it's going to trigger the actual ability. You could deal damage instantly or stun instantly, whatever you want to do. But in this specific case, we are kind of loading or charging uh, the ability on the ground, as you can see this circle. And at the end of that, uh, it's a lightning strike. Um, and it's dealing damage only at the end of, you know, the, the kind of charging time. So these were six different abilities using different mechanics from RPG Builder. You can do many, many more abilities um, than that. But I just wanted to quickly show you an example. Um, first thing to note is that abilities have ranks. If you, if you look at this here, which is a combat tree uh, system I have been working on, um, today actually. Um, you see that the fireball is rank 1 now, but it has more rank. It has actually two ranks. So let me show you uh, what ranks are. So as I showed you before, the fireball is just a simple projectile. But now if we actually choose to spend a point here and level up this fireball ability, now it shoots two projectiles. And if we go back, uh, I mean, if we go to the maximum rank, it's now going to be three projectiles. So how does this work? So let's get in the editor and let's look at the fireball ability. So um, here you see that uh, this is split in different ranks, just like we just saw in game. But this is the editor version, right? So um, the rank one has its own set of values. So each rank of an ability is 100% uh, custom and unique compared to other ranks, meaning that we can not only change values such as how fast the projectile, projectile is going, how uh, far it's going, how many projectiles you should shoot, etc. But you can also change the actual animation of the character. You can change the actual uh, visual representation of the fireball. What I mean by that is uh, that if you wanted to really polish your game, the rank 1 could be, you know, a small fire effect. Rank 2 could be an actual fireball and rank 3 or rank 10 could be a huge pyroblast uh, particle effect. And if you want to go even further, the rank 1 could play some kind of simple uh, spell casting animation on your character. And the last rank, like the 10, could be very intense and your character could go really crazy and charging it for a longer time or whatever. Uh, so this is very cool and this gives you full freedom on how you uh, customize your abilities and um, how, what can what can you change right for each rank and what your player are going to actually be um, upgrading and using. Um, so let's quickly go through uh, the different values that you have for abilities. The first one is very straightforward. It's the unlock cost of this specific rank. 
and this is what you can see here uh you can see that here the, the unlock cost for the rank 3 is 3 and this one is 2 and rank 1 is 1 as you can see right here so pretty straightforward um but this is very uh, important of course uh, so of course one of the first thing is also the cast time so when we do use the fireball you see that uh, we are actually you know casting it so let me relearn it because right now the rank was zero and uh, well let me close that and you see here above our health there is a cast bar of 0 0.8 second and so all of that is decided by um, this value here you can also choose if you want this to be possible to cast while moving you can also choose if an ability should be possible to use while you are stunned. So this could be used for some kind of cleanse. If you wanted an ability to uh, cleanse you from your stunts and stuff like that, you could be uh, using that. Uh, the channel time is uh, for things such as this one, the spray. You can see that here, instead of a cast bar, it's a channel bar. Channeling means that you cannot do any uh, other actions while it is channeling. The stun time is if you would want your character to be stuck in place for a specific duration after using an ability. The cast slow amount, I'm going to show you what this means. Um, so when we when we use this ability here, you see that the character is going slowly, 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 and then it goes back to the normal moving, movement speed. Uh, you do not have to use that, obviously that's 100% up to you. Uh, the reason I implemented that is because I think for cer certain abilities which are very powerful it could make it more risky to use it um, because it could you know um, you know you could think twice before using that because you know that you're going to be slowed down uh, while you're casting so you might not be able to avoid the next boss attack or something so it might be um, a life or death decision so the next um, module is requirements. Requirements are, uh, for example, for the caster or the target. So you could require an effect on yourself to be um, active to use this ability. So for whatever reason, you could require a specific buff on you if you wanted to be able to use a fireball ability. That's entirely possible. You can also choose whether you want to uh, consume the effect or not. And the same thing for the target. You could require the target to have a specific um, effect on it. Then you have, of course, the target type. So target type is more about um, what type of ability it is and, you know, how are we going to look for the post potential enemies or allies to hit. Self is, of course, straightforward. You know, it's just for you. So if self is uh, selected, it's going to use the ability on yourself. A cone is uh well you know a con so uh but you can choose you know um the con range the con angle uh how many time it should hit uh, in this con uh how often it should hit if the count is more than one and how many unit max it should hit and uh the next up is aoe so damage around you either one time or as a pulse like i showed you before linear is what we use for the fire spray so it's dealing damage in a line in front of you so it could be a square or a rectangle depending on what you choose the width and uh, length to be you can also choose the height so how far below you and above you it should hit projectiles um so this you choose of course the speed the distance at which it should stop if you want for example a projectile to stop at five meters away from you uh, you can choose the angle spread. Let me show you um, something. Uh, what rank are we right now for the fireball? Okay, let's go to the maximum rank. So as you can see, you know, it's uh, three projectiles right now, right? If we go to the fireball and to the third rank, and we now go here and say that the angle spread should be 180, and I want the projectile count to be 50, and I don't want them to stop uh, immediately when they hit a unit. They should hit 10 now before getting destroyed. And we save that. Um, if I use this ability now, it's uh, quite a different ability, right? So um, in a few seconds, we completely changed how this works. And uh, obviously, all of that is you know out of the box and made entirely in the editor. Uh, we will switch it back to normal because that's a bit excessive, I think. Uh, but that was just to show you how quick it is to um, 
quick values and your abilities and also note that this was done directly in game so we didn't have to uh, quit play mode you can just open the editor uh, tweak something save and test in game exactly how it is so for example if you were not sure about the projectile speed and maybe you start with 20 you hit save and um, you're like okay is 20 enough let's see it's pretty slow. I mean, if that's what you want, great. I mean, I think it's pretty cool for some abilities, but it's pretty slow, right? So let's just tweak it maybe to 100 and see. Hit save. So it's, it just lets you, you know, tweak your things so much um, faster than what you would usually do. And um, now ah, it's a bit too fast. So let's just put it back to 60 like before. So yeah, this was just, of course, an example to show you how practical the uh, RPG editor is. Let's go to the next um, ability type. So the square, obviously, uh, pretty straightforward. It's an AOE, the same around you, but instead of a circle, it's a square. So you choose the width, the length, and the height. Once again, the ground. The ground ability is what I just showed you with um, the lightning strike. So uh, this kind of ability, which is, you know, used on ground. And uh, here you can choose the radius. The range, because you can see that I cannot take, um, let me actually show you this right now, uh, for the lightning strike. If we take the range down to 10 now and save, uh, we will not be able to, um, take the, the lightning strike as far as we were before. So now you see that my cursor is further, but the, the, like, ground area is stuck at 10 meters. So this is pretty cool. I'm gonna put it back to 20. And of course you can hit, uh, you can choose the hit delay. So in this case, it's one second, the time that the circle loads up uh, and how many times it should hit. Um, for example, let's say we could do five with a 0 0.25 or rather four and 0 0.25 interval. And let's uh, look what, um, take a look at what it's doing. The particle is not going to be played five to, uh, four times, but the damage is going to work anyway. Um, if you wanted the particle to be played uh, every time it's dealing damage, which is probably what you would want to do actually, uh, you would have to, to tweak the combat visual effect, which is something I'm going to show you in another video. Um, so let's take it back to normal, go back to a fresh clean ability. The ground leap. Uh, ground leap is this type of ability. So the um, you know the kind of dash. Uh, and the reason it's called leap is because initially it was um, doing something like that. Let me show you. So let's go to the blink. Um, yeah. So you have a ground radius, range, hit delay. This is you know to set the um, actual ground area. But what matters here is uh, the ground leap duration. So in this case, it's a very, very quick leap. In 0 0.25 seconds, we're supposed to go from initial position to target uh, location. And um, the speed here, the lower the speed, the faster it goes, actually. Um, so in this case, it's a very quick one. But you can see that the, the height is at zero here. But if I would set this to 10, it will let, let us, you know, actually leap over um, certain, you know, object or environment uh, stuff. So, well, in this case, <laughs> it was pretty damn quick. So I might have to uh, take this up. So for example, ground duration, maybe 0 0.5 and the speed to 0 0.4 or something. Let's see, um, let's see what this does. It's been a while since I tweaked those values, so I'm not sure exactly uh, what is quick or not. But here you can see that uh, we have a much nicer and smoother leap. So um, once again, let's put it back to uh, normal zero. But yeah, you can see that this was pretty quick once again, and it changed the ability completely. And now you save again, and you use that, and it's back to you know normal. Uh, let's go back to. No, I think that was actually the the last uh, ability type. So yeah. So let's just look at what's next. Of course, we have cooldowns. So cooldown, pretty straightforward. You can choose a certain duration for your cooldowns uh, as long as you want. You can choose if the cooldown should be started on activation or on completion. 
This means that uh, for the fireball, for example, um, in this case, it's actually, uh, you know, uh, using the, the fire, I mean, like casting, uh, triggering the cooldown whenever you uh, cast the ability, but in reality, it will be um, uh, after the cast time if you wanted it to. The effect applied is um, for you to um, decide what effects are triggered uh, when you hit an enemy. So let's go to the fireball and let's go to rank one. And let's go back to all dummies. Okay, so here if I cast my fireball rank one, it's doing some instant damage. And the reason it's doing that is because in the fireball rank one, we have one effect applied and it's the fireball damage. Now, if you look at rank two, of the fireball ability it has fireball damage but it also has burn damage so um, if we go here and rank the fireball up now if i hit a unit it's not only dealing the, the instant damage it's also applying this um, dot damage you know so um, now concerning the visuals so the visual for an ability um, is something I'm going to be showing a bit later in a different videos because it's an entire different component and uh, it's not something I can really you know uh, showcase properly in this video. But basically, uh, it lets you trigger some kind of visual effect. So for example, the fireball projectile. If we look at here, the rank um, one here. Um, you see that you have an activation type, so you can either choose to uh, trigger this effect on activation, completion, or interruption. Uh, in this case, we want it. We want the fireball projectile, so the actual, you know, um, fire particle, uh, to be only when it's completed, not when we start casting it. So in this case, you decide completed and drag and drop an effect here, and that's gonna do it. So you can have up to two. If we need more in the future, I don't mind increasing it. It's not a big deal. And then you also have two slots for animations. The same, you can choose to trigger the animation on uh, activation, completion, or interruption. And in this case, it's the fireball animation for the character. So um, let me go back to rank one, for example, because that's the one we just looked at. Um, you see that first I use the ability, it's starting to cast, and the character is doing this, you know, casting spell animation. And only when this is over, we are uh, actually spawning the fireball particle. So that's what this is used for. Um, that's pretty much it for abilities. Um, that's all I wanted to show. I'm going to be making a video soon about combat trees because of course this is deeply connected um, about this thing here and how all of that works. But thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to see the next ones and uh, join the Discord so we can start chatting. Thank you and see you in the next one.